let, let's do this. Oh, there's a delay, so you'll hear some of that before I just press the button. And oh my goodness, everyone. Sorry for the delay. Uh, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and welcome to the Chemnitz Dialogue live stream for March 2021. I was having some complex technical difficulties in that the settings on my streaming software all of a sudden changed from what they normally are. And there's not like a reset all the settings button. So I was having to go through and like YouTube is still saying like that the resolution isn't great. And I'm like trying to figure out how to modify things individually when I had been using a standard setup. So I don't know what changed. So it wasn't a simple, it's not something as simple as like restarting the program because it saves the settings. So I'm gonna have to, maybe I can uninstall and reinstall the program later. Um, but hopefully, uh, hopefully it is looking okay. I actually think I want to check it now that it is out. Um, hello. Okay, I think I want to check it on just really quickly. I'm going to check it on my phone. Hopefully that won't give, I'll reduce the volume. I just want to see how it looks. It's really weird to, uh, oh, I have an ad. I'm going to skip. Okay, let's see. What resolutions does it say are available? Oh, that's not great. The resolution is really low. I don't know why it's not HD. And well, we're going to go with it because I can't change that. Uh, I can't change the resolution while I'm streaming. So. <laughs> Hopefully uh, it will work and we can dye some yarn. Oh my goodness. Just like when things like, yeah, stop telling me that warning. Like I've tried, I've tried changing everything. What did I do? Like basically what happened was I tried to insert some images for a slideshow and when they input, they were way too big. So I was like, okay, like, I tried to like just snap change the resolution and that changed all of the settings somehow in a way that I could not figure out how to do it. I had to like, yeah, it, it like, I don't know what I did. I don't know what I did. Watching yourself, watch yourself. Yeah. Um, oh my goodness. I mean, I'm not immune to technical difficulties, but this is, uh, Oh my gosh. All right. But anyway, welcome to the March Chemnitz Dialogue. And today we are going to dye some yarn inspired by this beautiful hummingbird. And it's a dialogue. So it's not just me dyeing yarn live um, on camera, but I'm inviting all of you to dye yarn along with me at home or fiber or fabric uh, inspired by the same photo. And then when I do a recap, once my yarn is dry, sometime in mid-April, I will share what the finished yarn looks like and incorporate a lot of your projects into that recap as well. So that way, it's really fun to see how different people interpret one photo and the different kind of really beautiful yarn that we can create. If you would like to be featured in the recap, there are a few ways that you can uh, submit your photos. You can reply <laughs> to the photo comment on the Chemnitz Facebook page. So on the public Facebook page, I always have the dialogue photo pinned. So you can reply down there with your photo, or you can use the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue on Instagram, and I'll pull a lot of photos, as many as I can, uh, to include in the recap. Now, uh, if you can, uh, I prefer if you submit individual images versus a collage or grid, because it's easier for me to import them into the video and is a little bit cleaner, uh, but I, I enjoy showing variety. So uh, there is that. Hello. The sound and the image is okay. I think that the resolution is really low, um, which like my output should be 1080p, but 
but I'm only seeing I'm only seeing um, like 480 here. This is gonna be your first month participating. Oh yay, yay! I'm so glad you guys are gonna join. Yeah, there's the you, I I give a, a few weeks at least for people to die on. You don't have to literally die at the same time as me. But I am really excited by this bird. I wanted to pick something in the greens family. I, I've been getting lots of requests for more green, more green. Um, but what I liked about this picture is that we could focus, oh, you can't see the, uh, <laughs> the mouse right now. You know, we could focus on just the bird and these beautiful greens and a hint of yellow, orange, and brown with some gray and black. Or um, you could focus on the whole picture with the, with the flowers as well. There's a lot that you could draw from here. And so that gives us a lot of possibilities and a lot of fun. Now, some of the yarn that I pulled for tonight were inspired by the shine that I see here. So I pulled some uh, Dyer Supplier uh, Sparkle Sock. That's the one with less Delina, which I think, ooh, maybe it's 70% Superwash Merino, 10% Delina, 20% Nylon, I think. Um, I think that's a sparkle sock. And then I pulled some Knit Picks Gloss. Uh, and Gloss is 70% Merino wool, 30% silk. And then I also have some Stroll from Knit Picks and Platinum from Wool to Die For which are 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And so that's the canvas that I will be playing with today. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited. And then let's see, so that's the canvas. And uh, yeah, I mean, speaking of nitpicks, uh, a slight update, I called customer service and they said that they're eliminating plastic bags from the warehouse entirely, but I have trouble believing that the mills are sending them like a crate of a thousand skeins that aren't packaged in some kind of way. So that way they're kept clean, well ordered and are easily countable. So um, supposedly they're gonna check on that and get back to me. But if um, they're no longer going to, So they, they've gotten rid of the large plastic bags that they've wrapped yarn in for a while. But these plastic bags that bulk yarn comes in are really important to me. Uh, this is how like I stack and store and do my own inventory. And if you saw, I received 40 skeins of stroll just loose in the box. So uh, yeah, if I don't hear back in a week, I'm gonna follow up again, but I expressed my uh, concern. The good news is that they did offer to replace any stand skeins or refund, um, and I didn't have to let them know right away because it was like, you know, it's hard to tell the extent of the damage because it could be when I take the label off, it's fine, it snaps back into place. Um, and what I think I pulled out one skein and it did, it snapped back. So that was good. That was good. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm working on sorting that stroll mountain, but so that's like a little update. And so we'll see how things go. I, I can't imagine that like this, like what happens if you order a hundred skeins? Like, you know, I, I don't mind having like, if I order four, having them loose in the box, but having 40 all of one base loose was just not useful <laughs> for me with the quantity of stroll that I order every year. So uh, there is that. The shimmering feathers give you the same idea. You're going to use the merino silks. Robin, where do you find a bare merino silk Stellina blend? Oh my goodness. That would be perfect. I would love something like that. I think the places I order bare yarn for from, and like, so Knit Crate has had some really impressive Stellina blends, but those are dyed. I don't think they've had any of them on Dyer Supplier. So I'm hoping that that updates. Um, so, ooh, oh my goodness. All right, I am very excited. Oh no.
Hey, it was buffering. Did it stop for anyone? I saw Carol. Okay, so fine, let me change the bit rate. What is going on? No interruptions. I'm seeing interruptions on my end. <laughs> what is going on? Um, am I actually live? Down there, we just want to, or you can use the hashtag Chem Commit Style on Instagram. And yeah, I'm not seeing the current stream on my end. Um, so why can't I see it? Okay, and it keeps telling me like these warnings and I'm just like, you know, like my bit rate, and I was like, okay, you told me my bit rate was too high, and so I changed it, and now it's saying it's too low. Um, so why can't I see it? Okay, so now I'm seeing myself current. Before, what I was seeing is in... <laughs> okay, wait, it's still saying... How forty six thousand is not more? I I don't know what's happening. Well, but I think the interruption was from me. Like I've never changed. I've never changed any of these settings until today. Advanced. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. You think it is lagging. You saw me type, oh no. So there is always a lag. The lag is usually, I think, 30 seconds to a minute or so. There, there, there is a usually a big lag um but it keeps telling me like my stream status is good but then it gives me these like warnings of like the bit rate and i'm like okay i changed it um wow wow okay but it seems to be working um but yeah it, it, that, yeah okay let's let's try to do this please let me know in the chat if things uh stop functioning um, <laughs> well, here, here's how you can do a, a lag check. It seems to be working. It's 7.54. It's 7.54 right now. Let's try to do this. Yeah, and so me checking that there's, um, and now it just turned 7.55. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, there, there's, there's always a long delay. All right, I am going to hide my face. I am going to make this small and let's go talk about some of these colors that I pulled. I wish I had a decent photo printer so then I could print out the inspiration photo to have to look at. So the iridescence in this is throwing me off a bit. <laughs> I'll be honest. And I pulled a bunch of colors. I've got some Aztec gold from Jacquard. I don't think I'm gonna use the pink orchid but I pulled that just in case. I have some Jacquard Hot Fuchsia um, already mixed up. And so I have that in case I feel like the yarn could use the pink. We have silver gray. These are all acid dyes. So everything I'm using is dedicated for dyeing yarn. 
not and is never used for the preparation of food. And when I open up these jars, I will get muffled because I'm going to put on a respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. All right. So for the belly, let, let's make let's make her bigger. Okay. Where are the dice? Okay. So for the so for like the belly and some of the feathers, I've got true black. The teddy bear brown could also be some of the darkness in the speckles on there. Um, and then I grabbed olive brown because that's sort of brown and green. Tobacco leaf might be too red, but it also, I pulled it because of that like near the tail, that yellowish, but I don't I think I'm going to set that aside. Fawn and honey mustard might just be tiny pops. And then for our greens, I have sour apple to hold in reserve. I want to use lichen and moss. And then I think I want to use chartreuse. Um, but maybe chartreuse and lichen were actually pretty close to each other. They look close to each other on the paint swatches, but I feel like I used them both when I did the moss version. So I want to start playing with these colors here and then we'll see um oh i guess that so i guess there is a tiny bit of purple in the green i'm reading that more as a bit of gray and so through the gray and black is how i'm going to bring the cool tones in um it does it could be it could read purplish or like a deep gray i think uh yeah well <laughs> We'll see. This is um, a lot of colors to deal with. So I'm debating how I want to start. I thought that I was going to, before all this, I spent some time looking at some old swatches that I, crude swatches I'd done. And so that's sort of where my mind was headed. And I wasn't going to redo it, but I think I am going to swatch colors because I'm feeling nervous and unsure of myself and um the I'm, I'm i'm not feeling confident because of the streaming software okay nope bird let me let me shrink you so i lost i lost a little bit of my mojo um from trying to input <laughs> i was just trying to import a slideshow and i ruined my whole streaming software Okay, let's see what I can do here. Uh -huh, perfect. Well, that was easy. Give emerald for the shine. So if I need more blue, the um, emerald would be way too deep. Um, the sour apple, if I need a little more blue, is where I would go. It's still like very apple-y but it would give us more of that true green by the head. So, yeah. Um, all right, I'm gonna bring over I'm gonna bring over the skin of Stroll, and this I pre-soaked in some water with vinegar. So there's already acid in here. And I'm going to do the swatching a little differently today, I think. But so I'm going to go get on my respirator mask and safety glasses. And so by differently, I'm wearing my mask now. What I mean is that I may not have everything in a clean order. I am going to apply these colors, see how I feel about them, and then proceed. So let's bring in a little of the sour apple because I know some people were asking. So there's not a lot of liquid in here, but see how this is like a good apple-y 
screen, it's not like bright chartreuse. Um, so maybe we will use that. So I am using this yarn very much like I might a yarn mop. And then I think I would go from there to chartreuse. Which, like radioactive, maybe I will end up taking a picture. Um, which, like radioactive, sort of breaks and has this like yellowy finish. I think that on its own, it might be a little too yellow. I might need to add, sort of blend it with a sour apple a bit. I am drying my hands before I go into the next color. So here's some lichen. Okay, yeah, so the lichen is dirtier. Um, it is more of an olive green type color. And I can't see the bird. I'm, not, I'm a little unsure about the chartreuse. The colors don't have to be exact, which is what I need to keep telling myself because, <laughs> all right, we've got moss. So moss breaks. Um, and this actually, I would like, so I'd sort of blend the moss and the lichen, I think, just like I might blend the chartreuse and the sour apple and sort of layer them um, to help give the little shifts that maybe will make it feel a little more like shine. I wish the bird were bigger right now. I'm like, oh. okay, and so then some honey mustard. Yeah, that's good for that pop of gold. I haven't used Teddy Bear Brown a lot. It's possible I might I might not use the black. The Teddy Bear Brown might be deep enough. Um, it's pretty pigmented. That I might be able to get away without having black. And then, okay, I think you guys will like how I think I'm going to play with all these colors first. Okay, so those, and let's do, well, why not add some black? I love you, true black. You are like my favorite acid dye color. It's like, I love you so much. Um, go rinse off my glove. Okay, my kids are so quiet. I actually really like all these colors together. Um, it's going to be hard to get the balance right so, so it feels hummingbird. I'm going to definitely need the least of the honey mustard. And then some silver gray. This is just nice and soft. Okay. I will take a picture of this.
And I didn't even write down labels, but we've got all of these dye containers. So what do you all think? Do you think that there's something missing from this range of colors? I know I didn't put pink in here. We may end up putting pink in the next one. I think that us little bits of pink could be really fun. But I'm really curious to hear what you think. And I will check the chat in a moment. But first, I want to make sure I can read. Okay, I can read all those swatch labels. First, what I'm going to do is set this thing aside. And I'm going to come over here. And pour water on this. This is water with vinegar. And I don't know, I just thought that it would be really fun to do that and let these colors spread a bit and sort of see what they decide to do and where they decide to go. I need my little spoon. Uh, I like trying different things. Oof, I like that the black is like spreading all around. I want the greens to like have their moment. Okay, I'm not going to move it much because I am going to move this to the stove and start heating it. And I can actually, now that our powder is all closed, I can come sit down and check the chat for a bit. And I need to make sure I see all the chat. I hope, excuse me, things did not freeze. I'm hoping and praying right now. Great. I'm going to make bird big again. And I'm going to turn my face back on. Hi. All right. So what do you guys think so far? I don't have a camera over by the stove tonight. Um... <laughs> but I think that this is good. More chartreuse, yeah. So I'm thinking that the, let me pull out my, my phone so I can look at what I just played with. I think that the chartreuse is gonna be a big player. Yes, so I'm thinking a lot of chartreuse um, with some hints of then the sour apple and lichen and moss on top of it, um, sort of like sour apple at the at one end and then the moss and like in a little more down towards the bottom. A tiny bit of the honey mustard, um, the brown mostly at the bottom and then black speckles and I might add a bunch of gray sort of like speckles all around too. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree that the greens because it's hard when I had it small that I was seeing more of the muted greens on the background versus the, the green that I'm going for in the bird. So I doubted the brightness. But yeah, I think a lot of chartreuse with then um, hints of those of those others. But I really like, um, I really like this. I like the palette. Um, Yes, so I, this is a really good point that Victoria made. Victoria said that she only has five or six colors and she can still make a nice result. Absolutely. I like playing with premixed colors, but I also like mixing my own hues. And maybe it would have been less intimidating for me to try to go and mix things. I'm still not entirely sure if we're going to dissolve some dyes at some point and how I want to go about applying things. 
I am, you can see I've got plastic wrap on the surface. I am going to play with a sock blank and dry powders uh, first, even though it's second. Uh, and then after we set that aside, then I might um, dissolve some and we might do a different type of technique. Um, so we'll see. I might not get to all the yarn that I've pulled. We'll have to uh, see how that goes. The teddy bear brown looks a little better than the with the colors. Yeah. Um, if I'm going to use black, I would just do some speckles of it versus having a lot of it all over. Um, espresso bean. Yeah, but it would be too purple. I like, I agree that now looking at it, I'm seeing a hint of purple in the wing that before I was seeing gray, but uh, I, I'm not sure. I think if I'm going to do a pop of a reddish hue, then I'm going to do a pop of that pink. Um, is what I'm, I'm planning to go for. So, yeah, I, I'm considering adding a pop of pink, but I may not. We'll see. The moss is was really really pretty. Uh, really really pretty. Oh, I want to toggle timestamps. Help me. <laughs> You need dice with these colors today? Yeah, I mean, there's so many ways to play. Okay, I think I'll get back to the counter, but uh, always checking for school updates. But yeah, so what I think I wanna do, so a soft lilac is possible. It's a lot harder. Am I like not even on camera? <laughs> I'm like there. I had the, the chat over it so I couldn't see myself. This is what happens. <laughs> um, the, um, yeah, the, it's hard to get soft colors when you're starting with the powders, um, just because, um, because they're so pigmented, but maybe. I won't say no, but this is why um, I challenge you all to die along at home because you can you can add the uh, colors that I did. Yeah, the, that lime green flash is really nice. Um, it's hard. Like I wish. Oh, you know what I should do? I should just open the image so I can have it bigger because I was like, nope, Rebecca, why? Oh my God. So there's a radio tower near my house and we get interference and it's like interfering with my trackpad right now. Okay. What I'm going to do, because I need to be able to see that, I need to be able to see those, but I can open the image because I was wanting to have the bird bigger on the window so I could look at it while I'm doing this, but I just pulled it up and like set up another way to do it. Okay. Okay. So, hi Spoon. Let's see. Okay. The, so the black has continued to like stay semi put. I'm really enjoying, I wonder what's going to, it's going to look like when I flip it, um, over on the stove, but, uh, I'm excited. So those colors I just didn't use, but I have a plan and my plan is going to start with some silver gray. All right. So right here, I have a double stranded sock blank. This is one of the ones from wool to die for, but the nitpicks ones are pretty much a, they're, they're not pretty much, they're an extremely reasonable dupe. Uh, I find that true black or like silver gray really pigmented, like gives a similar tone to the true black and vice versa. But, um, so the silver gray gives a very similar tone to the true black, but it's less pigmented. So therefore it, um, if you want something not very uh, saturated, or if you want black speckles that are more spread out, 
then I recommend that. So I've put this blank back in the pre-soak. And I don't often dye yarn in these basins, but I want some gray all over. That's something that I think, because we'll cover it up and like a tiny bit of gray isn't gonna dampen the green significantly. But what I'm gonna do, is I'm taking the silver gray and I am sprinkling this powder over the surface. And since there's acid in here already, there is a chance that this might just give me some black speckles. Um, and we'll try to like also spread it out. So it's sort of like a, a two for one special here. So if I get the speckles, then I don't need to do the true black later on. But by coming in, because of the way it's moved, we're not going to get something like super, super solid. And there's going to be some dye left in here, but we're going to be starting with, instead of white, something that is softer and gray. And so I'm just going to let this sit in here for a little bit of time. Uh, I don't think all of it will absorb. We have seen sometimes, though, color just really strike uh, at my house. <laughs> and why are things not striking over there? I mean, for good measure, is that a tablespoon of vinegar? I'm pretty sure I always going to go to a dye bag, but it's always possible I didn't. So why not? <laughs> okay. There we go. And since in doing this, um, this means that some of the speckling, because we're on a soft blank and when we unravel it, there'll be some speckles. Doing it this way and letting this dye soak all the way through the blank will mean that instead of seeing a lot of white, we'll have a soft gray. And so I'm going to bring this aside. I don't quite know what I'm going to do with that gray water. Oh, I know. I'll pour it in a jar. Do, 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 do. And put that aside. Okay. Now let's spread out the blank. And so you can see, like, in some places we have a little bit of speckling. <laughs> it honestly just looks a little bit dirty right now. But I wanted to bring the gray in and there's really not a good way with speckles to just do gray and oh what i didn't consider well i might be i think i'm gonna wipe my <sighs> i'm undecided i want to speckle but I, I might wipe my hands on here but i still think i might need a yarn mop so let's make one I'll check the chat. Um, hello. The fork method, method, can you make speckles of liquid dye? Um, yeah, you know, what's funny is that I did this fork method in very, very early video. So I was trying to figure out how to speckle, and I was like, well, maybe if I dip a fork in it and do it. Um, and it worked well. I just haven't done that in years. Um, it was, oh, yarn. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, I'm
I'm going to pop this into some water. Oh, I want to add some acid to that. <laughs> Little splash. Doesn't need to be a lot. But I do love randomly wiping dye. Where am I going to put this though? Okay, stool. <laughs> My poor sparkle yarn is pre-soaking, thinking, Rebecca, are you ever going to actually use this? I'm really happy with the way the light wash of gray worked out. Um, you know, it's sometimes hard to predict exactly how fast colors will strike. And so that's why I was like, if I get speckles, I get speckles. If I don't, then we'll go with it and we'll see. So of the yarn bases I have, this is the one um, that would do best with speckles. Okay. So, and by speckles, I'm going, planning to go heavy. So... Look at my bird. Okay. So chartreuse is looking super yellow at the moment. That was a lot right there. Well, I'll start to sink in. I'm getting a little nervous because it's now looking yellow when I had really liked that green before. So let's double check and give myself, see there's hopefully, oh, what I hope is that all the blues didn't just stick to my fingers. Um, but if that happened, if that happened, then I um, can add more of the sour apple, which I'm mostly going to focus up here, just sort of like near this top edge. With a little hint of it going further down. You can see this is a, like that brighter green from the head. I'm really, really wanting to like touch it and I'm holding off really, really hard. Um, because the chartreuse is not giving me the chartreuse I want. Um, okay, so then I wanted some moss. I'm going to do this like triangle y shape here. And the thing with this is that I'm not going that light. As the color sinks in, it's going to spread a little bit. So 
So with that moss, I want to layer the lichen. Um, but I'm going to focus the lichen a little more over there. And what applying the color to sort of portion of the blank will do is that it will, um, we're getting more green. It's turning more green. What doing that will allow, like, it'll give, some of this will be sort of fade, and then this will almost be, it could be, depending on the length, could be a little micro stripey with where the, these different greens show up. Um, it's hard to say exactly, but giving a few hints. I think lichen okay almost <laughs> just poor guy now I want a tiny bit And I only want a tiny bit of the honey mustard. It doesn't need to be a lot. bringing it up high, but I'm not using nearly as much of it as I did some of the other colors. I like, can't see what you guys are thinking or saying, and so it's really hard because I don't know. But I like this. I'm not sure it doesn't feel like the brightness, but I also know that the dyes haven't like sunk in all the way yet. So think about the um, the colorway I did, the sparkle colorway I did for Hanukkah, and how um, like much those colors really popped after I steamed it. Okay, and now we've got our teddy bear brown. I feel like I want to add more of something down to this end. Maybe more of one of those end greens. But I want to add, instead of black, I think, I'm adding flex of this brown. Oh God, hopefully this isn't too heavy. I may have overdone it. Um, that's part of the definition of those feathers. Okay, I, yeah, this is falling pretty fast. There's a lot. Um, let's maybe do, Hmm. Maybe some more chartreuse. That brown is intense. Um, a little more chartreuse and a little more moss. I'm really excited by this. And then we might add some paint. You see how much greener it got versus the yellow that we have over here? And then I want to add more moss down there. Okay. 
All right, chat. I'm going to give you some minutes to decide. Do you want me to bring the pink in? Or should I leave this in its like green foresty glory? Because we could be good. We could be good here, but I also want to acknowledge that everyone wanted pink before. If I did pink, I would do the smallest amount sort of random So I'm curious to see what chat says. Yes, pink. Okay. Rinsing off my hands. Um, all right. So the reason why I'm not also adding orange is because that honey mustard brought some of the orange hues in, even though that's part of the bird. <sighs> Guys, all right, I, I'm going to take a picture first. I'm nervous. <laughs> I mean, I agree that we should add pink, but the glory that is... This right now is amazing. I really, really like it. All right, we've got some pink orchid. Deep breaths. Of course, I also picked a pink that I barely used. So. I'm barely moving my fingers. I'm looking for spots that are gray to help me determine where it should go. And I don't think on camera you might see it. But I promise you, it is there. All right. The pink is such that you will see it more, and I'll try to see if I can zoom in so you guys can see it. The pink is such that you will see it make more of an appearance as you're knitting. You'll look at it and then you look closely and you'll see that it's pink. It's not loud. Um, I don't want it to overtake it, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to show you. Turn off the on the stove. I think that yarn is done. Let me see. Okay, you you can barely see it. Let me try. Um, settings. Let's try. Room. Um, okay. The colors aren't coming through as clear, but do you see sort of towards the center of the screen and then down in the lower corner, there are these pops of pink in this field of greens and browns. Um, so it's almost more of a, an undertone or like a heathering, if that makes sense. Uh, 
Um, Honey, where's our dog taking red? Yeah, so I think, so right now, I see these little pops of pink, um, and I really like them. Uh, I think that once it's dry, they will be a little more obvious. These colors are really spreading through. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is wrap this up and then set it aside because I don't have a steamer basket I can use because my pots are full. My pots are full from earlier. So I'm not pressing down on it. But you can see we do have some color coming through. Oh, I didn't take a picture. <laughs> oh, well, I'm not going to unroll it. Um, Okay, I'm going to set you aside. I have no idea where, as my like, kitchen is. Okay, Ta -da! setting it aside. I will steam it later. Okay, so that's one color way. Um, and then, let's think. Oh, but also, let's take a little bit of a break from my mask. And I want to bring over... What am I smelling? Smelling something, and I can't put my finger on it. Um, I want to show you the swatch yarn. I'm flipping it for the first time, and the color went through really well. Sometimes it's really fun to use dry powders and then just pour water on top of it and see where it goes. And so here's here's our, our yarn, which I don't think all the colors, the colors never come through quite as nicely, but the, the colors did penetrate really deeply. The black spread, um, but we've got all of our greens and that yellow. And so it's just like a fun, uh, easygoing start. And I guess I say easygoing because it would be, I love doing these sort of speckled, oh, I can come sit down. Shift everything around. Died by committee. Yes, but I definitely have veto power. I've got veto power over that committee. <laughs> um, You like that it's only a touch of pink? Yeah, so I like, I know sometimes when like, okay, I'm focusing on the bird, but there's like, or something and there's an element and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna do the blue sky. Like that's not what reach out to me and everyone's like, but please, please. And so then I'm like, okay, okay. And then I think about it. Um, that's a callback to Zula's very, very first commit style on. Um, yes, I really, really like it. I think that the, the part of this bird, and of course I'm looking at it bigger on my screen, but I can make it bigger for you. The, <laughs> as I just drag it instead of making it. No, come on. Okay. What I should be doing is I should just set these up as different scenes so then I can just quickly toggle between them. That would probably make sense. Uh, what really drew me as I point to something that you can't see me pointing to was this greens gradient, that sort of brighter stripe down the middle. That was the, the thing that really, really excited me about uh, the hummingbird, but having like some like little hints of the pink all around is fun. I mean, 
I'll be honest, I'm also inspired by just the blurred out background. Like cover up the bird completely and look at those greens and browns. Like that's really exciting as well. So I'm very curious to see how bright this feels with that gray wash over everything, but we will see. Um, Yeah, so I think that the pink could also be really, really fun just at the top. But I think one thing that I'm learning as I'm thinking more and more about fades and I, I'm actually going to grab my swatch. I shared this on Instagram already, but here's my swatch for my Comfort Fade Cody as part of that knit along. And not all the colors are showing up well on the camera, but what I like is like there's this sort of like orangey color and it's like pulled down all the way through. And so I think sometimes I think a little too literally like, okay, like skein one will have this color and this color and then the next one and like shift. But there's also something about like slowing that down and tapering them off but letting some elements of that color be all the way through and so one concern that i had is if i just had the pink at one end which also could be really really pretty but then maybe like it would feel like it was completely different yarn from the other end um if everything else was slow and there was just the pop just there but it also could be really pretty so i you know i i uh, question myself a lot <laughs> Yeah, well, and you know, so with this nylon, you could go just for the flower and ignore the bird. Um, there are so many ways that you can play with this. And I'm going, and I was drawing so many different hues into this. You could pick a green, like the brown, and a pink, and just play with those three colors too. So there's no reason why you have to try to get every single like element in here. Um, Oh, yes, I am live right now. I'm glad you caught me, Lynn. So it's fun. Um, whew. But yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. And I'm still, this one I think is too big. It's almost dry. Um, so I didn't fade the four colors together here. So you can kind of tell where I changed. But I just knit it because I wanted to get a sense of if I liked the color progression as it was to help me feel through that and so I could like move it around and be like okay yeah I, I like that um and so I'm excited uh what do I want to do next well I'm gonna grab some water if I have one no let me get a water Um, so the swatch I'm doing, um, so Grocery Girls, Lavian, Amy, and um, Andrea, I'm blanking on her last name, the designer of the Comfort Fade, Comfort Fade Cardigan, they're doing a knit along that started yesterday and is running through, I think, June 19th. Uh, and so I will be knitting that. And so I bought the yarn for it. I uh, decided that I was feeling a lot of pressure on myself to make a sweater since I haven't made a sweater in a long time. I was feeling nervous. And then I, I initially bought Superwatt Swish DK many years ago because I wanted to make this sweater and I wanted to dye yarn for this sweater, but I couldn't decide on the colors that I wanted. And then every time like I dye a mini fade, I'm thinking like, is that what I want? And just second guessing myself. And so then I decided to uh, buy the yarn for it and just uh, treat as like a present for myself. And so I will be, um, I'll probably do a vlog about it at some point. 
but for now I will be sharing and I have a highlights on my Instagram so all the stories that I post about it will then be able you can like go back and look and see the journey as I'm doing it so yeah but yeah so that's what that's that swatch yeah the oh my gosh I mean another thing I considered was I've got this fiber I think it's diamond from uh, Paradise Fibers that has this like angel iridescent Angelina in it. So instead of like silver Selena, it's got this iridescence to it. But I haven't decided what I want to do with that, and I don't. I didn't want to just use it on a whim because I'm saving it, and I don't know what I'm saving it for. <laughs> and I don't know if I want to spin it and then dye it, or dye it first and then spin it. So, uh, and like. Suffering with scarves is hard, but lifelines are amazing and really, really useful. Uh, yeah. Okay, so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a brief break uh, and I will insert um, I will insert an ad. Not everyone might see it, but I just inserted an ad, which might, the, the delay and timing is off. Um, and so I will just take a brief little break. Feel free to leave um, questions in the chat. And then as I'm doing this, I'm going to consider how I'm going to die on the next one. Hmm. Oh, and also you can vote if you want me to do silk or Stellina. Silk blender, Stellina blend. Uh, yeah, because I'm trying to decide what I want to do and how I want to do it. Hmm. I definitely want to start cool on the counter. But I'm trying to decide if I want to dissolve the dyes and do it that way and do something more like repeating or what. Oh my gosh. All right, I'm going to hide my face. Yeah, well, the Angelina fiber I've been playing for a very long time. And I, I whispered there on purpose. But yes, I've been thinking about that for a very long time. Um, hello, hello. All right. Let me give myself a minute. So I want to admit something very embarrassing. Um, I have a bit of an addictive, addictive personality when it comes to video games. And when I start playing a game, then like that's all I want to do. Last week, we there's our neighbors like behind us. Uh, Pre-pandemic, we would get together around once a month and like make cocktails and play board games. The kids would watch a movie or something and it was great and so they were just we could except for like a fence and like part of the neighbor's yard we could almost connect our backyards uh but so we did this over zoom the other day and we played what is it rummy cub um we played that like with the tiles before but we played it online together in an app and so like this game this game um and I am like, so we started last week and I'm already level seven and I have been playing it like nonstop. It's bad. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to share that because I was curious if like anyone else plays. Not that like I like who you end up playing with is totally random unless you have people right with you that you share the code. So it was more of just like a, hey, Random Rebecca thoughts. <laughs> All right. Oh no, I lost. I lost chat again. Um, silk, please. My swatch is so pretty. You bought yarn for the party two years ago when they came out. Um, yeah, more hands. Silk, definitely. Silk, silk, silk. Okay, we'll we'll go with silk. I so Animal Crossing is probably a game I would like. I'm not allowed. 
uh, self-imposed, not allowed to get it. Um, the games I play a lot are like, uh, po well, I haven't played Pokemon Go as much recently, especially since I completed my Pokedex from Pokemon uh, Shield, uh, <laughs> like the expansion Pokedexes. But I play like um, Wizards Unite. And the thing about those games that's good is that I have to go outside and walk around and do stuff. So it's like my, okay, I, it's encouraging me to like go for walks and then keep walking longer. So that's great. Um, but yeah, so, but things that, uh, like, and I, I love Minecraft and I can play that for a really long time. Uh, but it's just, I have to like, you know, once I start, it's just like calling me like a new book. Like when I start a new book, I, I often reread books these days because when I start a new book, I can't stop until I'm done and I don't want to do anything else until I finish. So that makes it really hard. But if I've read it before, then I can stop and put it down. <laughs> um, if you're submitting pictures for the dialogue on the Facebook page, can you submit multiple pictures, just different replies? Yes. So you can reply to the photo like on the photo and then you can reply to yourself with additional pictures or you can have multiple comments that those are both totally acceptable i would say if it's um if you did multiple different versions have each yeah you can either have as many replies to yourself i won't necessarily use all the pictures but i'll probably use a couple um and yeah so that's an easy way to do it what takes up color better? I haven't dyed Angelina before. That might actually take up some dye. Um, but in terms of the Selena or silk, um, the, the silk yarn isn't super washed, so that'll give a uh, more blown out look than the, um, than the Selena. The Selena I could speckle onto. It'd be a lot harder to speckle onto the silk. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you love the random Rebecca thoughts? Yeah, random, random Rebecca-isms. Um, so there's, uh, well, uh, I won't say that. Okay, so another random Rebecca-ism is, uh, I normally do some kind of April Fool's Day video. And sometimes it's just like a cheeky thing with my kids. The very first one was like Kenneth is changing hands. And then it had like two-year-old Lucas messing around with some yarn. And so it was adorable. I highly recommend it. It should be in the like Chem Kids playlist. And I don't remember if it was last year that I baked a yarn cake into a cake. That one was just like how to make a yarn cake. And so like I wind the yarn into a cake and then I get a box of cake mix and okay. yeah, that was an April Fool's Day joke one year. And yeah, so I don't entirely know what I'm gonna do. It's not gonna be as extreme as the cake, but uh, we have some ideas. And so just as time goes on, if you can see a video that's weird, look at the date it was published. <laughs> Um, cause there might be something that doesn't feel very typical for me. Okay. Oh man. All right, let's, let's, since we're going to go for silk, I think we should mix the dyes and dissolve them a bit because I think that that'll be better for dyeing the silk. The silk is pre-soaked for a couple hours and there's no acid in it yet. So I'm gonna grab some cups and I think I wanna narrow down the colors a little bit. Oh dear. So I'm like looking at my yarn. I think if I stick with, so, okay, so colors I already have mixed. I have some black already. I've got some Aztec gold, which is a little dirtier than the honey mustard, but may work. 
I've got some radioactive, which is really close to the chartreuse. I think I want some moss and some brown. The pink, I might use just dry if we go for pink. You never know with me. So one thing that I have that's a little irritating is that these cups like don't stack perfectly anymore because sometimes when they get a little bit like warm, if I put it in the dye bath a little bit, then they warp a little bit and so then they don't stack. Um, let's mix some gray. Oh, but I have that gray. So maybe we'll just use that gray. Okay, so I can keep extra cups. So what did I say? I wanted to do brown, moss. I should do some sour apple. Um, let's grab some lichen. Okay. And I need to put my respirator and gloves and stuff on and get gloves. Heating up my tap water. Um, is it too late for the mix? Uh, I did do that. I mixed all 50, um, 50 nifty colors together, and that wasn't even. I mixed 50 food coloring colors together, and then I dip dyed it. Um, and I didn't even. Um, that wasn't even a joke. I did that a little more seriously. <laughs> Oh, I mean, I could, should I do a, like, I mixed all of my acid dyes together video? Is that something people would be interested in? If so, maybe I would, um, because that would be a lot of dye. Maybe I would sell some, uh pre-orders for it because even if I just did I have a lot of acid dyes and maybe I would just stick with one brand so even if I just did like this amount that would still be a lot of dye I'm probably going to forget what colors I've mixed here by the way Let me get the warm water. And I do want to add, I don't own a complete collection of Dharma acid dyes. I own a lot, but I don't have all of them. Care if these are really well dissolved. Um, ooh, actually, that isn't that important to me today because these aren't like stock. I mean, they're quasi stock solutions, but that is not critical. That brown is really dark. 
Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I am going to because I'll never remember what colors and I want to check the chat. Uh, I want to grab I'm not writing things down today. I'm just taking pictures. And then I've got gold and radioactive that are pretty ancient. Okay. Um, no, it wasn't Inspector Gadget. I don't know what I was doing. Um, oh, Emily, thanks for plugging me. Thank you. Yeah, the yen pink one was April Fool's Day. Um, but I don't even know. I said April Fool's in the, in the description, but I don't think I said it in the video. Um, <laughs> basically, I had made, I think I made writer's birthday cake, and I had some mix left over, like a fraction of a box. And so that's part of what went into it. I think that was the year I made, I don't remember. Maybe I was making cupcakes. I'm not sure. Um, pan. I have to sneeze and I'm wearing my mask and I absolutely hate that. Um, not a fun feeling. Okay. a lot of preset but not all and I did attach all of the serum together and oh I dissolved things oh I can be free um oh that feels glorious safety is important but man I was getting itchy um okay so this is the uh nitpicks gloss fingering that is 70% merino wool, 30% silk. And I wasn't sure what else I might pre-soak in the bucket. So therefore, I decided to soak some of these together. So that is what I did. Okay, so we've got 300 grams. And we are going to apply dye. to the yarn in here and gently move it around with no heat. And then uh, once we've added all the dye and we may have a fair amount of liquid or we may not, then we will go and heat set it. But first, I thought I'd come with this leftover gray. Not add it to the whole thing, but just add it. And that there sort of exemplifies this technique I am going for today. I will be adding the dye and letting in sort of dilute fashion. The thing with silk is that it can take so much dye. Technically, I think there was some vinegar in with that gray. Um, but the silk can take so much color that whatever we get will oh, definitely look lighter um, once we're done. But see all the dyes would be together would be fun. Okay, well, so then maybe instead of, oh, I don't know where, where, there, okay. Instead of, so I was thinking about doing one of those random, like, mystery draw color things. But instead, and I'm going to take some radioactive, and I want to get a cup. We'll use this. 
Um, I wanted to do like one of those like mystery draw colors and see how they break kind of things. But because I haven't done one in so long, but instead maybe we'll do a uh, live stream while I actually mix all the dyes together and film the time lapse. Okay, so here is some radioactive, which we're using instead of the chartreuse. Um, and let's add you. This is definitely a color that does break. So you never really know when you're doing something like this, what's going to go on beneath the surface. But if you add enough volume of a color, then, and I'm not going to lift up all the time, then some of it, I guess I'll lift all of these up now because I did that, but there's some amount that will go through and some won't. So there might not be as much of this green, but it might be more yellow down there. Um, and so we can, if I flip, um, I can apply more of these colors to the other side, but we'll also see what it looks like when we get there. Okay, let's add more water. And I am absolutely just dying by feel. And oh, as I splashed, I don't think it went on the ground. I'm still wearing my safety glasses. Uh, so here's some of that sour apple which, okay, I definitely can go deeper there. Need to get more water. Adding the dye with a larger volume of water, and I got a lot of this, but adding the dye with a larger volume of water allows you to spread it out more. So I feel like I'm going to, actually, I could add some pink onto that. That's fairly pastel. Um, that could actually be pretty nice. All right, next let's do whatever you were. Oh, you are probably the lichens. Let's put you like here. Ooh, it's like nice and dirty. I like it. It's like a greenish brown. Things may not be going as far through as I think. Maybe I, I was very conservative with the amount of dye that I grabbed, but that's okay. I can always go and once we're on the, um, that's more pigmented. Once we're on the stove, I can absolutely add these colors uh, as dry powder and move it around to also just give some variation there. Or I can just mix some more. Like that's all okay. As much as like I love adding colors randomly to various um, spots on yarn, um, which is something that, okay, I don't want to add too much liquid because this might like spread too much into there. Um, as much as I love, love, love doing that, I also get like it's harder when there's like 300 grams of yarn in a pan because the when there's so much yarn in here if i add so randomly then it i don't know sometimes i struggle more with balance okay let's just dilute that little mossy stock and then let's get some of this aztec gold which I feel like this is like a love it or hate it kind of color. Um, I I don't hate it. It just reminds me a bit too much of baby poop. I 
definitely could add more. Oh, this is fun. I mean, clearly the bottle is clogged with something, but so I'm liking this. I just feel like the colors aren't necessarily as deep as what I wanted. And so what I'm going to do for the brown, whoo, see, I told you the brown was intense. This one I have not um, done the same uh, dilution for because we've got a lot of liquid in here. But since things are not striking super fast, I am able to work it through. And maybe let's pump up the volume a little bit on some of this. Oh dear. Since I would I want like a monitor for my kitchen so that way I can see the chat um while I'm doing this because I can't read it. Oh oh Don, thank you so much for the super chat. I saw that big box pop up. Thank you, thank you. All right, let's also. Go a little bigger. With the radioactive. A little more. Okay, now friends. The big question, do we want pink? And I'm gonna come look at the chat in just a moment. But the big question now is whether we want some pink. Um, oh, okay. These gloves are going to go dry. Wipe that down, and I will come check the chat. Let me see. Um, a, just a splash of pink. Okay, I would put the pink down at the pan. Oh, wait, but I'm saying no. Do, 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 yes and no, yes and no. See, if this were, you always want pink. Just a hint, a wee bit. Okay. A tiny bit. Um, all right, I, I think I'm gonna go for it. I'm scared. All right, I think I'm seeing more yeses than no's. I would say if I was left to my own devices, I probably would not do pink. But I'm not left to my own devices. <laughs> it's a risk. It's a risk. Uh, okay, so this is going to be a slightly different pink than the one we had before. I've got here Hot Fuchsia. This is a jacquard color. What I'm gonna do, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm breathing heavily. Oh no! <laughs> um, a little more. Oh, that may have been too much. I'm 
I actually like what it's doing, combining with that green a little bit. Okay, now I need to start heat setting this. I am terrified. <laughs> this is so scary for me. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm now removing the gloves so that way I can refill. I don't know why I took the gloves off. This is a dye vinegar. Okay. We're going to add lots of acid. There are lots of colors in this. Okay. All right. This is a very literal one. That pink. And so if the green spread and that gets like muddier, I think that that's also okay. I'm going to move this over. No. I'm going to take a picture first. Because once I move it, all kinds of stuff can move. <laughs> this is very out there. Did the picture actually take? Okay, yes. Now I need to do some moving around with everything. I've got the sock blank that still will need heat. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Let's move you. Oh my gosh, you're heavy. You're heavy. The stove. I don't see things changing, but things can change when you add heat. And I'm coming back over because we have our yarn mop from before. And so this is the dye bath that we used with that test swatch. And move you back there. So we have this skein right here. I'm going to pop it in. And we'll see how much these colors move, which honestly may not be very much at all. Um, I see a little hint of some colors spreading out, but the just sort of sitting there and having this be vinegary. Um, I actually really like this. Because I've got leftover dye here, and I can't decide what I want to do with it. Okay, so this... I will set aside and heat set shortly. So I could add more of the color to this. Okay, actually I'll ask you, should I add more color to this now or should I just set it the way it is? that and I'll come check the chat in a moment and actually as I'm doing that I can clean up a little bit before I like completely excuse me completely soak my um, powder containers so I'll check the chat in a moment Pink, brown, gray, where is my black? Brown, gray, black. I don't currently have my dye colors organized very much by color, just by brand. Thank you. 
I love my jacquard dies. I just use the Dharma ones more because it's easier for me to find the color I'm looking for, even though I've got more bins. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm dreaming of a studio. Oh man. That pink is giving me a little bit of a panic. <laughs> okay, I'm coming back. And hello. All right. Oh, so add more, more color. Okay. So if I don't, I'll, and I'll, I'll add, if I don't add more color to uh, this mop above me, behind me, if I don't add more color to that, if I leave it like more white with those pops, I will get another skin of yarn to do with the, there's a lot of brown, <laughs> a lot, a lot of brown. Um, so we'll leave some bare spots. Okay. So I'll do a hint. Um, yeah, so playing with leftover colors is never a bad idea. Um, I'm using Knit Pick Stroll. I use gloss, the, that more um, variegated, the more like regular repeat was uh, gloss, and that's what I've used so far. Um, but I'm going to set up, I may set up just like a tonal uh, cool vat with a leftover brown and get a nice brown tunnel, but I might mix the green in is one thing I'm considering. So, okay, I'll add a little bit of color to this and then we'll set up a cool vat. So I think that. Woohoo. I think I need glasses. <laughs> Although I also ran into a tree today and I poked my eye true story. Um, but I'm definitely having trouble reading the chat right now. <sighs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, oh, you know what I want to check? Stream health. Stream is healthy. So all the warnings and it's now working fine. Um, oh, and as I say, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. So, yeah, my um, weekends are big for dyeing, so like, I don't want to wash everything. <laughs> oh man, this is the problem. Okay, let's think. And I love that there's just like a little bit of fuzz in here as well, just sitting there. I tried to pluck it out and it was like, no, no, I'm good. Okay, so. I don't know what colors I've got. I just wanted more. Done. This is a different, oh. this is a different pink from the other one, but I'm using restraint. Cause a lot of these will will spread some.
All right, there we go. So it's just a little bit more. And so I'm going to move this to the stove and Soften those a little bit, and I'm going to set it. So you can see that technically the hot fuchsia is different from the pink orchid. They're not the same color, but it's close. So I'm very carefully going to move this and add heat. So one perk of doing things cold is that you can have colors spread through your yarn and fiber more. But one um, negative is that then when you move it, things spread. But that also can be a perk. Okay, there's still green there, still yellow there, still pink there. I'm like nervous to eventually flip. You know what I might do? I might not flip the silk tonight. I don't know. But let's set up a, um, I promised you guys a cold out. Um, We're working on our mountain, on Stroll Mountain. So this is not pre-soaked. I'm going to pre-wet it. I'm just going to dunk it in some water and bring it over. Stroll is pretty absorbent, so it does okay without a pre-soak. It depends on what you're absolutely going for, but Now, if I did not have two other cool vats in progress right now, then I would probably do the green and the brown separately. But we are in a uh, gotcha. I want to. I don't want to save leftovers for tomorrow because I've got loads of in progress things. Okay, so that's some water. Let's do some more. Okay, there is no acid in here yet. Emphasis on the yet. But my water is slightly acidic, so take that for what you will. And things are going to mix together, likely. Depends on how much I actually try to mix them together. Yeah, I'm going to move things around. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of white. Okay. Things are striking already. We're going to pick up... Flip over, 
is not nearly as saturated as I expected. Um, let me turn off the timer. I forget that like I'm sort of able to just tune it out and lots of people aren't. Okay, let me get a little more water and I totally can't see from my monitor. But we're gonna rinse out all of these cups. It almost feels gray. The mixture of the like brown and the green. A lot of it has definitely struck already but I actually I think that there's something like very earthy about this and fun okay I'm gonna add acid now it's definitely soft let's go ahead and do how much do I have here one okay so probably two and a half Okay, there we go. And I'll heat set that tomorrow. My hands are filthy. And I have water inside my gloves, which I hate. Occasionally, I've been trying to draw and like to save them and reuse again. So like I'll sort of hang them up to dry so then I can gloves are so hard to find right now it's so expensive okay oh our yarn mop with that extra color is looking really awesome I'm gonna set a timer for 15 minutes on that the silk I don't know what I'm gonna do with this yet there is absolutely still color that hasn't absorbed. I don't think I moved things enough such that I am going to be okay not flipping and adding more color. But I think that if I decide to flip it and add color in the morning, that is okay. What I want to do is add more vinegar to that though. So I am going to add more acid, even though I know you can't see. There was a time when I had two webcams, but I gave one to Keith. Um, actually, I'm adding a fair amount of acid. Okay. And I'm going to turn off the heat. And then I'm going to just let that sit and be. And the cool fact, eventually, I'll come and add like a lid onto it. Ooh, I think on camera you don't see the like olive green color that's at the one end, but it's there. I promise. Ooh, I'm trying to like scooch so I can be back on camera. And I can see what you guys are talking about. Um, you love this one. Uh, okay, let's see. I'm happy with the. Oh, you dyed some delicious cotton with great Kool-Aid and it turned out beautiful. Yeah, I'm curious if it broke as well. Um, oh, it didn't, but it came up more pink than purple. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Um, let's see, you stepped away for a second and the yarn is gone. Yeah, I put it on the stove. Um, um, is that black? So no, this one is brown. So the end that's looking a little bluish gray, that's brown, and the other end is green. I'm not sure which green. It it looks it looks pretty dark on camera. It's not, it's probably gonna end up being fairly medium toned. Um, um, um so Kool-Aid. Uh, um, I, I don't, yeah, there's citric acid and Kool-Aid already. Depending on the yarn, you might need more acid. 
um, and depending on the pH of your water, and how and also well depends on how many packets of Kool Aid that you've used. If you use like eight packets of Kool Aid, then you probably don't need any more acid. But yeah, I think in person. Let me. See. In person, it looks really, really soft, like a tiny bit of moss on mud. Like, it looks really dark on camera, but this is multiple shades lighter than, like, the green of my shirt. Um, so it's not that close. Oh, shoot. I saw the sock blank. Okay, I'm going to move that up here. This still needs to be steam set, Rebecca. Um, yeah, so shoot, because what, here's my dilemma. I dye some yarn today and it's for the summer mini skein mini series. Stay tuned. There'll be pre-orders at some point. Uh, oh, excuse me. At some point and then probably by the end of the month or sooner. Uh, I don't have a time pick yet, but I want to reuse, part of me is like, I can reuse these dye baths to dye the next batch of that. Um, it's not a big deal to just reset with more water and vinegar. So I don't think it's a problem to not use the same dye bath. But uh, to steam set, I need one of those pots to do the steam setting. So that's my dilemma. That's my dilemma. I need, we are, so we're not in a situation where we can help me get a studio out of my kitchen anytime soon. But we are, we've got this like weird little mud room that's not insulated. So we don't actually want to keep coats in there because it's really cold because there's no heat or anything in there. But I think that uh, we're going to set up some wire shelves so that way my drying pans that are otherwise like all over the house on that way they don't like rust or mildew or something, I think those will go in there. So, uh, what if the bunny turned blue from eating indigo plants? Oh, funny. Um, yay for the, for the dive into dying. Um, I hope, I hope that, uh, it, that there's no like shipping issues with it. Uh, um, but yeah, do you, if, um, if there's any, any trouble with waiting for, with the box and you've been waiting too long, uh, I would reach out if you've already emailed knit crate customer service, I would also reach out on to them on Ravelry or, uh, Instagram or Facebook or something like that. If there's any issues, um, in the past, yes, in the past, I would knit my own sock blanks, not by hand. I would use like kids crank knitting machines, um, like a singer. Knit. I have some videos on how I did that. Uh, these days I tend to buy them mainly because of time. And I started getting concerned as I'm, is 37 late 30s or am I still mid 30s? I, I worry about like repeated stress injury and stuff. And so, um, that's also one reason why I bought a skein winder a few years ago, which helps me make the mini skeins for Hanukkah and things like that. Uh, because, you know, I just worried about like, about getting injured <laughs> or something. Uh, yeah, I think one of the next things on my list is to get an automatic um, ball winder just because, yeah, I, yeah, I, I think about um, things like that a lot. So... Uh, yeah, so the sock blank I did today was not one I made. It's one that I bought. Uh, it's also just, you know, in terms of time, like I can, I can wind a double stranded fingering weight blank on one of the knitting machines in about 30 minutes. Um, so that's not bad, but <laughs> it's time. Um, okay. The other crates have been coming. Oh, good. It hasn't been saying it. All right, good, good. Um, you love the little bob haircut that I have? Yeah, I miss my bob. I can't tell you 
well, I, I can't tell you how close I've come to just myself, but then I would probably have a panic attack. Uh, and so I just, when, so my turn to get vaccinated, I will be able to start signing up in a couple weeks. Um, my group will come up, so I'll be able to, so then, I mean, I don't know when I'll actually get an appointment, but once I'm fully vaccinated, then I think I will go probably and get a haircut. But I'm also debating, because it depends on how much I want to cut, I'm like close to having a donatable amount, so I might keep the long hair a little longer, so then I have enough that I can donate. So that is um, something I'm considering. But last March, right before school shut down, I was thinking, man, I really need a haircut. And then schools were canceled, and I was like, well, I guess I missed that vote. I guess I can wait a month. So this is the, I think this hair is longer than I even had at my wedding, uh, which is the last time I intentionally grew it for a period of time versus just not having time to get a haircut and waiting to get a haircut. So, yeah. You have carpal tunnel right now, and it's awful. Yeah, I... So around, around after Lucas was born, I had some issues with my hands when like they were, I was really, really struggling and like I couldn't put my weight on my hands to help myself get up because it hurt. And so then I went through a period of time when I was like sleeping in wrist braces and stuff and it got better. Like it wasn't like super extreme, but it was frightening. Um, you know, I was concerned. After Ryder, I had like a big hip injury for a while. That was uh, rough. But otherwise, like, it's been, my hands have mostly been fine. My mom had a, has some really bad hand injuries from a, stemming from a car accident. So I'm just always like thinking like, okay, what, what are things that I do that then make me feel sore later. Let's be careful and not like overdo it. Um, I have been cutting my son's hair and I'm about probably to cut Keith's soon. It's, it's unclear. Part of us thinks it would be fun for me to cut his hair and then do some like random stuff. Keith's hair is like here right now. It's pretty long. He also hasn't had it cut in a little over a year. He last had it cut in January before. He'd been keeping it a little bit long um, lately, but it's really long right now. He looks very much like a like a rock star kind of like long hair. It's it suits him a lot, but he's like, how do you deal with having hair in your face when you wake up in the morning? So uh, we'll probably cut it. Um, and so yeah, it's unclear if he's going to want me to do it, which worst case scenario, then you just get the clippers. But yeah, so, so we'll see. <laughs> uh, but it's also sort of just like, we're like, okay, at some point we're like, how, oh, one thing though, he was like, I'm never going to cut your hair. So he refused to cut mine because, um, I've gone through periods where like, I would, I, I had a series of bad haircuts in a row where like things were like really uneven and so then I got like really anxious before haircuts and then by the time I had kids I didn't really care as much anymore so I'm pretty much over that but he's like he doesn't want to cause a, a freak out or a panic. Um, you like the long hair Rebecca? Well, so today it's really pretty. Like the waves are really nice today. And I'm, today I'm like, ooh, it's great. But I just, it, it, you're, it's just in my way a lot. And I like, it's easier for me to manage and have it in a way that I like when it's shorter. Um, so, Massachusetts, woo. Um, I would love to hook a knitting machine up to a, a bike pedal. I saw someone share on Facebook the other day a like ball winder that was hooked up to pedals. I would love that. I would love that. Um, so we do have a 3D printer, <laughs> but I don't know. That might be a little more than we can print. Um, but yeah, I will start thinking about like the schedule coming up and seeing if there's a time when I can do like a, let's mix all my 
or not maybe not all, but all, a lot of my gamma acid, a lot of my acid dyes together. So maybe I won't go and pull out like the greener shades and all the chicard. Although I do have a complete collection of chicard acid dyes. Although I may have used some up. I don't know. Hmm. I have used all 40 jacquard acid dyes on one skein. That's a skein that I kept. I like, I'm obsessed with it. Um, when I was opening the, all the containers, I took the, there were like little like metal covers on the lids and I took it and I put them on a skein of yarn and that was really, really fun. Um, when are we going to see the yarn? Um, well, the yarn that's hot on the stove, I'm not going to pull over. Um, the yarn from this, I will um, be including some of the pictures I took of the stream in a couple weeks. I'll have that um, there. I think that, I think we might have an Ender one. I don't know. He just got it for his birthday. Um, but Keith, his research, like, he, he uses um, 3D printers for work, and so he has a lot of like experience with troubleshooting them and stuff and modifying them. So, <laughs> so that's a reason why he wanted one at home, because he has, uh, yeah, he uses them for his research. Yeah, so I like, as long as I can put my hair back with a bobby pin, and just get it out of my face, then I'm fine. It's the, I like the long that it is now better than when it's, so I like it above the shoulders. When it's like just like hitting the shoulders, I get really annoyed with it. So it's past that part, but it's heavy and yeah. <laughs> but I can sort of like, and the ends are like, I mean, I rarely use heat or anything, um, but the ends need attention, so. Yeah, I was thinking that, um, I was thinking that Keith could get me, could print me bobbins. Uh, but actually, we have some collaboration ideas. Is it weird to think of it as a collaboration when it's your husband? <laughs> oh, but yeah, we have some ideas of like things, chemnitzy things that he can do. Okay, I'm going to show you all. this one. Okay, so this is our yarn mop. It just came out of the stove, all the colors in the yarn. Hopefully that showed up. And so that was the, the last one. Where is my, let me get the lid for this. There's still color in there. We'll steam that set that in the morning. Hmm. I'm gonna check, I have the heat off on the silk. The greens have cleared. The brown is cleared, but the pinks have not. And so that's why I don't want to flip it yet because um, I want to give those pinks a chance. And so that's why I think I'll let it cool and then flip and reheat and add more color tomorrow. And I'll film that. Wait, um, what bugs you? Um, it, it bugs you to, cons to call it a collaboration for working with your husband, my husband. Uh, Keith is a uh, mechanical engineer 
and he's a professor. So. And most of you know, but I have a uh, PhD in biochemistry and molecular pharmacology. So we've never published together. We did help set up some like classmates for a collaboration at one point, but our work, our research work never really like works together. But I have been able to advise on like some cell, like some cell culture stuff and bacterial stuff for him. Uh, and so he now actually has some of my old textbooks and notes and protocols uh, for his lab. Wait, radioactive. Wait, what did I say radioactive? Oh, oh, I see the question from up above. I missed that. Um, it got buried under the pink. As someone with a science background, does the radioactive green bother you? Um, I mean, like, I think not really, because when I think of that, I think of the, like, cartoony, like, thing. It doesn't, um, yeah, uh, but that is a fair point. So I'm curious now if I... Yeah, I mean, I think that just because, oh, the color looks weird. I think just because it's, like, representative of the color that you see like that, but not that, like, it's the color that, like, I didn't do a lot of stuff in the hot lab. Um, I did uh, very little, but some, like, I don't know, this is why, really, like, some of the stuff from lab is, like, why, like, I won't use my food microwave or refrigerator with things that aren't food. I'm very, like, once it's dye, it's dye. <laughs> uh, you like the scientists me pondering what they did to the dyeable cotton? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I can see say for sure that, um, that yeah, I, I certainly can understand people like not being totally comfortable with the color, uh, the color name. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I missed that. Uh, yeah, with the so one thing I didn't say in the video, but I think I said in the comments later about that dyeable cotton, the dyelicious cotton. I really hypothesized whether they were treating it for like a textural thing, or maybe just trying to shift the color a little bit or something. And then a side effect that went later when they went and dyed it, they realized that this picked up pigment a lot more than something else. Um, because I have trouble seeing why someone might try to do this. <laughs> um, and another hypothesis that I have is that, so fiber reactive dyes form a covalent bond uh, with the cellulose fibers. And so it's possible that some part of that mechanism is what it was treated with. It's just it doesn't have a colored um, component there. It's not absorbing something in the visible spectrum. And so therefore, it's not something that you see. And but then that allows it whatever that R group is would allow uh, acid dyes and other types of dyes to bind really easily. So that's just like, uh, those are random hypotheses. I have no idea why they would do this when, yes, you might need a lot of dye and fiber reactive dyes might have their quirks, but they work. So it's not like it was undyable before. So anyway. Oh, you got a wireless camera? Oh, that's great. That's great. Uh, oh, okay, another question. You know Nick Crate Citrus Squeeze, the orange and yellow? Uh, 
I vague, I don't remember if that's one that I received, but long sections of dye, stripes of blank. That sounds really pretty. That sounds really pretty. Um, does repeated use of a dye bath change the pH of the water? Do dyes use the vinegar or can you use it indefinitely? Uh, so I'm not, sh again, there's a question about what's getting protonated and so then what pH do you need? I mean, in theory, if you just keep at, like when you add more yarn that was pre-soaked in water and more dye that has been dissolved in water, technically you are diluting your acid a little bit, which is raising the pH a little bit, slightly. So in theory, I have used the same dye depth over and over and over and over without a lot of issue. But at some point I do need to add more water and acid because the volume, either whether it's heat or just adding dry yarn and soaking it up, the volume goes down. So I, so that, so indefinitely, maybe not necessarily, but a long time, yes, a very long time. Um, okay, there's some, what should it say? Um, something I wondered. I know dyes aren't food safe. What what about them makes them unsafe in any way? Uh, some dyes do have heavy metals, which is something that you don't want to ingest. But also, uh, I think that, like, you can go and look at, there are material data safety sheets, MSDS, wait, material safety, MSDS sheets for all compounds. And it can say, like, whether things are irritants and toxic and what have you. Now, a lot of times these reports are done by like, you like, if you take a lot of it and you throw it at something, is it toxic or is it carcinogenic? And with a lot of things, if you throw a lot of something at it, it can be. Um, so when you're looking at them, there's precautions that you wanna take for sure, but you also like don't panic or anything when you're looking at them. Uh, and so I would say that there are very, very strict rules about what is allowed to be consumed. Never consume anything <laughs> like any acid dyes. But I think that uh, because a lot of times there may not have been testing about certain things and like some of it is because things are known that they can be harmful if you ingest them. And some of it is there's an overabundance of caution that you should take. Uh, and so, um, you know, you don't, you don't wanna be ingesting heavy metals. And like, when it comes to even food coloring, there are food coloring in Europe that's not approved in the US for consumption. And some food coloring that is available in the United States is not approved in Europe for consumption. And so it isn't available there. And so to some extent, there's some variety of what different people consider safe, but with acid dye, so food coloring is a type of acid dye, but with commercial acid dyes, I'm not sure what all the other additives are. Like in, you abs, like you don't want to eat it. Just like you wouldn't want to eat paint, you know, like it's just not something that like, and not that anyone would ever like try it, but you don't want to accidentally ingest it. And so that's why like I'm like with the even the spoons and the pans and make sure they all look super different, especially since I do convert my kitchen from a dye kitchen back into a food kitchen. You can see I protect my work surface. I do wash and dye pans and yarn in the sink. Um, but I rinse down the sink and all of our food dishes then go through the dishwasher. Um, so there's extra rinsing there. Um, um, so I use dishwash or I use dish soap, um, for washing yarn because it's right there. <laughs> um, and laundry detergent does suds more and it's so concentrated that like it, yeah, it's less, I think it is less irritating for the skin 
And I don't think there's anything wrong with using, some people use wool wash, um, so. You would love to buy Dylicious yarn from Lori, but you'd have to spend 135 pounds to send them to the UK. Yeah, wow, that's expensive. Um, I think, I don't know if there are other places that sell it. So uh, I did link to their website in the video description, so I don't know. It's, I have no idea if some's available in the UK or not. Um, Sometimes it's like the diet itself might not be dangerous, but how your body breaks it down that makes it toxic, toxic as it gets metabolized in the liver. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so there's, um, you know, there's many things. And like when it comes to safety and things like that, there's always like a lot of, things to consider, but eye protection is important. Wearing gloves is, is important. Um, you know, and it's not just like a cosmetic thing, but like you, you know, your skin is there to protect you. And so you just, you want, yeah, you, you just always want to be careful, I guess. And so, um, but the, the concern with a dye pan that you use for dyeing with commercial dyes and then if you were to use it for food, if the pan wasn't well cleaned, or if on a small scale, maybe there's some residue or something like left there. Um, since these are all things that may be tested in some ways for toxicity, but since they have not gone through tests of being ingested necessarily, you don't like, you don't know what could happen, and so therefore it's just worth being really careful. So uh, there is that. So yes, absolutely. Um, like I just recommend using different things, and some people have different comfort levels when it comes to things. Some people don't want to die in their kitchen at all, and I feel okay doing that because um, of. I also look at the um, recommendations from dye manufacturers and if they're saying like, hey, use this in your washing machine, then like, you know, they are saying that you can use it in your home. And so those are recommendations that I take. But uh, I am dreaming about getting out of my kitchen <laughs> and into a Kenneth's kitchen. <laughs> That is a, a dream of mine to like set up an actual like filming and dyeing space that is oh, that I don't have to convert back and forth. Yeah, I mean I have no idea. Like I someone mentioned Dylicious in I forget if someone DM'd me or if it was in the lab, Kenneth's lab. Um and so then I went and bought some because I was like, this sounds amazing. Uh, but yeah, I have no idea how widespread it was because I hadn't even heard of it. Uh, so, you know, soap makers take similar precautions too and they're working with, yeah, sodium hydroxide, yeah. So like vinegar is, is, is not very dangerous, um, especially when you're getting it like in food grade and stuff. Um, but yeah, soap making can be, and like with the lye and stuff can be, eventually you get soap, which you use on your bare skin and wash your hands. But some of the things in the process are very like dangerous and you need to take precautions um, when, when dealing with it. And so, yeah. And, oh my gosh, I got a dye studio. Like I, oh, I, I, I'm dreaming. I mean, it's, well, the kids are this young. It is very convenient for me to have, to be able to work from home because then like, I have like a flexibility, which helps. And like Keith's job is actually fairly flexible. Um, so, but he can be flexible with notice. <laughs> so. Oh, thanks for sharing it with me on Instagram. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. 
I have a lot of fun. I, I really, really enjoy like doing these live streams and stuff. And I, speaking of, I probably should go and start <laughs> cleaning up. Sometimes when I'm dying late in the evenings, I might leave it and then get up before everyone else and clean up. But I have enough stuff that um, certainly I'll leave the washing of yarn until the morning, but I do want to steam set um, that before I go to bed. You worked in labs of color works back in the 70s, and there were very few precautions. Oh, my. Oh, my. Your beauty school instructor used to use sodium hydroxide relaxers with her bare hands. Oh, my. Um, nasty cleanup. Yeah. Um, I have a, uh, so I've made, like, fizzy bath ball things before, which isn't really soap. <laughs> Um, but I have a, um, melt, a kid gave me a soap making kit once, but it was like a, like a melt, like it wasn't like starting like from scratch. It's got the like melt soap. So it's really just sort of like adding fragrance, fragrances and colors, which I think that kit is just, <laughs> it was a good gift. It was a very thoughtful gift. I just haven't used it. Have I ever tried weaving before? Not yet. I have my rigid hello loom, but I have to figure out how to do the strings and the bars. And uh, I'm hoping to uh, to try soon. Um, if not by uh, if not over like Pesach, then um, certainly when like yeah, well when the kids are in school, it's just all hectic. Yes, melt and pour. That's the kind. That's the kind. Uh, so it's. I actually should, I should do that with the kids. And I should put like toys in it or something. They should like that. They like using up all the soap. My kids. But man, I have yarn in every single. Okay, I did, oh no, I do have yarn in one of the five gallon buckets, but it's not dying. So that's just pre soaked. But I've got yarn. Let's see, one, two, then three is up there, and then four, five on the stove, six, seven. Yeah, I did a lot today. I did a lot. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go, and so that way I can steam set the blank. <laughs> uh, oh, on how to set up my Bridget Huddle Loom. Um, I'm in a I'm in a Facebook group, and I know that there's tutorials in there that I can look for. Uh, I just you know, I, oh, I needed, um, when I started, when I was putting it together, I didn't have any shuttles. So I had to order those and it took, uh, they were back ordered from Paradise Fibers. So it took, they didn't arrive until early January. And then my January was a difficult month. And so that, that's where we were. Um, yes. Oh, I'm sure. I think that there would be a lot of fun, like, uh, to making, like, your own soap. And I think if, like, you know, I, I can imagine. Um, I, I mean, I like watching videos of people making soap and, like, pretty soap. I find it relaxing and fun. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if I would, I would do it myself, though. Um, all right. I, I'm, I'm going to go for real. I could probably sit and talk for a really long time, but I'm feeling like the fog come in. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, my, um, so my youngest is at, in a, since he's still in pre-K, he's at a private school and the class sizes are so small. He's been five days for a while. Um, but Lucas will be five days starting in April. So I might, not be working on weekends. <laughs> it shouldn't be so bad. I like, I clean up as I go a lot. And so, um, dishes all rinse and finish washing in the morning. I just need to, yeah. I'll set aside the yarn to wash in the morning. The nice thing about the dialogues is I don't film the washing so I can do it while there's chaos in the background. So that's really nice. So it shouldn't be so bad. Uh, 
as I like <laughs> need glasses. <laughs> or I need to figure out how to make the text on the chat bigger. But yes, because putting on my safety glasses is really going to help me. <laughs> and yeah, this is not something that I would have normally done in the lab. But in my home, I will put my safety glasses on my head. Um, thank you all so much for joining me and hanging out. And I really hope I'm really nervous about that pink and the silk. <laughs> but we'll see how it is. And hey, if I don't like it, and if no one likes it, then I'm going to say I can always over dye it. And someone asked me how often I actually over dye yarn. And not very often. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Although maybe sometime I should do a video where like I go through my shop and I pull skeins to over dye. That would be fun. That would be really fun. All right. Thank you all so, so much for watching and tuning in. And again, um, please subscribe, like, turn on notifications, all of that jazz. And if you would like to die along with me with our beautiful hummingbird, and I gestured in the right direction this time, uh, Please share your pictures with me on Facebook. Look for this photo. Um, it's facebook.com slash chemnitz. And uh, just reply with a photo comment to this picture. You can reply with many photo comments and I'll pull a bunch. Um, you can also submit your photos on Instagram um, using the hashtag chemnitz dialogue. And again, I will, I will pull. If you're going to dye yarn from a previous month, uh, please just mention that like, oh, this was from January or something if it's more recent. So that way, like, I can easily tell because sometimes people use the hashtag and I'm like, it doesn't look like that that was necessarily inspired by the photo. So sometimes I'm not entirely sure. But so including the month in the comments helps. And yeah, thanks for dying along with me. And I cannot wait to see what you've all created. Good night, everyone. Bye. I always get goofy when I turn that off. All right. Good night, everyone.